So I have my label, scans the label, there we go. Wanna learn more about the Lose It Calorie Tracking app? Well, in this video, I go over everything you need to know. Hey, if you're new here, my name is Kevin and I'm a certified personal trainer. And on my channel, you'll find weekly reviews, tips and tutorials on fitness apps, equipment, and more. And today we're looking at the Lose It app. The Lose It app is a calorie tracking app used to log your food and exercise that's also meant to help you achieve your weight change goals. It's similar to the popular calorie tracking app, MyFitnessPal. And if you wanna see my review and tutorial on that app, go ahead and check out this video right over here. Lose It is available on Apple and Android devices, and there's a free version of the app, as well as a premium version. In this video, I'll be going over the free version of the app, but if you wanna learn more about the premium version, go ahead and check out this video right over here. Anyways, now I'm gonna be going over all of the app's features, demonstrate how they all work, explain what I like and don't like about the app, and then give you my overall recommendation. My day, daily summary. At the bottom left of the app, there's a tab that says my day. And here, you'll get an at a glance look at your daily and weekly calorie intake. The whole premise of the app is to monitor your calories so you can achieve your weight loss or weight gain goals. When you set a goal, you're given a daily amount of calories to consume per day, and your objective in the app is to hit your target as closely as you can. At the very top of the current day, there are five daily tasks for you to complete, which include log breakfast, log lunch, log dinner, record your weight, and I'm done logging for the day. Below all this is the day summary. You'll see your daily summary for your calories, and the circle graph will indicate how you're doing in terms of your calorie budget. The green represents the calories that are within your budget, and the red represents the calories over your budget. Below the circle graph, you'll see bars for each day, giving you a quick view of how your calorie budget has been over the week. Swiping to the left will bring you your macronutrient summary, which shows you a pie chart of your macronutrients, including fats, carbs, and proteins, as well as your weekly intake for each macronutrient in the bars. Log. When it comes to your log, which can be accessed from the log icon at the bottom, you'll be able to add in your breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. Underneath each meal are also the number of calories that are suggested you consume based on your goal and we'll get into that in a bit. In addition to your food, you'll also see the ability to add exercise and health data to your log. You'll notice that you'll need to upgrade to Lose It Premium in order to add a calorie burn bonus, which essentially adjusts your daily budget based on your activity. You'll also need to upgrade to Premium in order to track your water, body fat, and sleep. However, you'll be able to add workouts and your weight in the free version of the app. I'll demonstrate how to add food and exercise to your log in a bit, but first, let me show you what the app looks like with food and exercise already logged in. The top bar shows you your calories progress with your budget, food calories, exercise calories, net calories, and how much you're under or over. And if you tap calories, you'll access a drop-down menu showing you macronutrients, as well as specific macro and micronutrients that are locked unless you upgrade to premium. When you tap macronutrients, the bar at the top will display your fats, carbs, and proteins. Also, Tapping the calendar at the top next to the date will give you a look at your calorie breakdown over the course of several weeks. Now I'm gonna show you how to track your food and exercise. How to add food and exercise. Okay, so now I'm gonna demonstrate how you can add food to your log and lose it. And you can do that in a couple of different ways. One way is by using the scan a label feature. So go ahead and find the food you wanna add. So for breakfast, I wanna add some oatmeal. Here, I'm just gonna tap add breakfast and on this oatmeal canister, I can see that the barcode label is right over here. So on my app, I just need to go tap scan a food item and it has a barcode icon. So I'm just gonna tap that and you'll see that it's scanning. So I have my label, it scans the label, there we go. So now I have oatmeal, oats, old fashioned dry and one serving, uh, 0.5 cups. So. All I need to do is tap that add button and it's there. Another way you can add food into the app is by scanning the food itself. I'm gonna add this orange to my breakfast. Go ahead and tap that. You'll see the barcode icon again for a scan a food item. But again, it doesn't need to be a barcode. So let's tap that and scan this orange. Cool, and it identifies the orange, so I'm just gonna tap that and it gives me some suggestions. Let's just say it's a medium sized orange, tap that. One serving, add. And just to demonstrate that cool feature again, here's an egg, go ahead, add breakfast, scan a food item, scan that egg. 
tap egg. It's egg large. One each add. And now it's part of my log. Another way you could add food is by looking through the database. So just go ahead and add whatever meal you want to add and go ahead and search through the database. So let's go ahead and search for egg and see I have all these different options here. And when you tap on any one of them, you'll see all of the macro and micronutrients associated with that particular food item. If for any reason the food you want to add isn't in the database or you can't scan it, something you can do is you can create a food. So just go ahead and find the meal you want to add this food to. Scroll all the way down to create new food. And here you can add the food name, add the brand if there's a brand, and you can also choose an icon which is really fun. And all of its macro and micronutrient information, and its calories. And then you would just hit add once you input all of that information. But yeah, here's what the log looks like when you have everything that we added in there. And again, note the icons. It actually has an icon of oatmeal, an orange, and an egg. And it totals up the calories at the top of each meal. And it also adds it to the top. So you'll see that the food budget has 291 calories because of what we've just added. So now let me demonstrate what happens when we add exercise to this. All right, so I just finished running a mile. It took about 10 minutes and I want to add that to my Lose It app. So I have my Lose It app open. From my log, I'm going to scroll down to exercise. Workouts is different than the calorie burn bonus. I believe the Fitbit calorie bonus and any other wearable after you upgrade to premium will factor in your activity throughout the day since it's tracking you. But what we're doing here is we're adding a workout. You can add workouts in the free version of the app. What you're gonna do is tap add workouts and running is something I did before. So that's why it's there, but you can also browse exercises if you wanted to. But anyways, running. I ran for about 10 minutes for a 10 minute mile. So go ahead and adjust this. Okay, so that was an estimated 119 calories burned. We're gonna go ahead and add that to our log. And you'll see at the top that I just haven't logged in my lunch or dinner, but basically when you add in the exercise, it now factors in with your food. So it gives you your net calories. So you have your food calories and then subtracted from that are the exercise calories you just added. So we are way under 1825, all right? So as you add more food throughout the day and as your exercise towards the end of the day, you'll have a better idea of how your budget works. So let me just go ahead and plug in some things so you can see what this might look like after an actual day of eating. All right, so I just added some lunch and dinner calories in there so you can get an idea of what an actual day might look like. Um, so I hit almost 1500 calories. I was at 1473 consumed, subtracting the 119 from this mile run I just did. My total net calories are 1354 and I was under by 643 calories. And then if I take a look at the day, you'll see that it's all green. So yeah, that's what it looks like when you track food and exercise in the Lose It app. Goals. Under the goals tab, you'll see your weight progress on a graph. You can see one week's progress, one month's progress, and so on. If you need to record your weight, just tap the record weight button and input your weight, then save. Scrolling down, you'll see more goals. However, they're locked unless you upgrade to premium. At the very bottom, you'll see that you can set another goal in terms of body fat, steps, macronutrients, and more. Again, these are only accessible if you upgrade to premium. Starting a plan. Usually, when you register for the app and open it for the first time, you plug in your weight goal and the app sets up your calorie goals. If you need to start a new plan, just go to the goals tab and where it says change on the top right of the weight graph, tap it. You'll see your information as well as your budget and weight loss goal. Something really helpful is that it projects your goal weight date if you stick to the plan. Social features. Under social features, you'll see a tab at the top for groups and here there are popular posts in the community from different groups and you'll notice that they're all fairly recent posts, most posted just a few hours ago. So there are clearly many active users on this app. A post under the popular posts tab will display the name of a group, the user, how long ago they posted the message, and the message itself. Tapping on the post will allow you to see all the comments made on the post, and you'll be able to comment yourself. If you tap on the group name, you'll see an option to join the group if you'd like. Next to the groups tab at the top are messages. So if you have friends on the app, you can communicate with them here privately. There's also a friends tab that lists all your friends 
as well as an option to add some friends using email addresses. And finally, there's an alerts tab that shows you any notifications you might have. Integrations. There are several integrations with the Lose It app, and you can see them all by tapping your profile icon at the top right and viewing them all underneath automatic tracking. You'll see integrations available for Apple Health data from your iPhone and Apple Watch, Fitbit, Garmin, apps like RunKeeper and Strava, as well as Smart Scales. However, remember that you need to pay for premium in order to have these affect your daily budget. Miscellaneous features. Some miscellaneous features you'll find under the Me tab include deeper insights, which is mostly a premium option. You'll also see the ability to export your data if you wanted to see it all on a computer document. Themes and meal settings are premium options, and they basically allow you to change the app interface and toggle on and off the meals that are displayed. In the free version of the app, you'll be able to set reminders for your meals, as well as participate in challenges and earn badges. The good. What I really like about the Lose It app is how user-friendly it is and its overall design and aesthetic. It's really easy to interpret all of the information with its many graphs and progress bars. It gets to the point and shows you all the information you really want to see. You're not bombarded with ads or news articles, just your calorie information. And I think anyone who is just getting started with tracking their calories can easily understand their budget and how it works. Logging in food and exercise is also very intuitive and easy to do. And setting weight change goals is very simple. I appreciate how it sets a safe minimum amount of calories so you're not prompted to undereat to hit your calorie goal. Also, the icons they use for each of the food items are really fun. The bad. There's a lot I like about the app, but something I didn't like was the constant push to upgrade to premium. It seemed like there were a lot of cool features, but when you tapped on them, you'd be hit with an upgrade to premium screen. And there are premium features I think should have been free, such as water tracking. Especially when water intake is so essential when it comes to managing your weight. This is a free feature in MyFitnessPal. However, it's only a premium option in Lose It. The same goes for connecting your wearables and fitness apps in order to adjust your daily calories. So while there are plenty of premium features, there are some that I think should have been free. Overall recommendation. Overall, I think this app is an excellent choice for anyone looking to track their calorie consumption. And it rivals that of even MyFitnessPal. It's very simple and easy to use and has a majority of the features you'll need in order to be successful with your weight change goals. There's a lot of pushing for you to upgrade to premium, but it's still a very helpful app. So if you're looking for an app that will allow you to track your calories in a way that's easy to understand, this app will get the job done. So that's my review and tutorial of the Lose It app. Are you going to give it a try? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe for more fitness app content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.